everyone. Today, we are going to tackle about the models of disability, specifically the first two models, the moral or religious model and the biomedical or individual model. Now, let's define first the following key points before we are going to proceed with the discussion. Disability. Disability, according to the WHO, is any condition of the body or mind or impairment that makes it more difficult for the person with a condition to do certain activity and interact with the world around them or participation restrictions. Models of disability. It provides a reference for society as programs, services, laws, regulations, and structures are developed which affects the lives of people living with a disability. Models aid comprehension by allowing one to examine and consider something that isn't the real thing but is similar to it. You might ask how important it is to know, to learn, and to study the different models of disability. It is critical to understand the different models of disability so that people with psychological disabilities can work with various types of services to get the help they necessitate, to gain a better understanding of the problem or the world around them. People employ different types of models. To fully comprehend the diverse perspectives of disability, a number of conceptual models have been developed over time. These disability conceptual models are useful not only for defining, but also laying the groundwork for government or society or even educational environment to meet the needs of people with disabilities. The Moral or Religious Model of Disability This model comes from the different religious perspectives including the Judeo-Christian traditions and known to be the oldest model of disability. This model stated that people with disabilities are embarrassing and pitiful. It is a punishment from God because of a sin committed by that person. Many were hidden away because of the embarrassment which made them to have no right to anything. So therefore, they always needed to be very thankful. As a form of retribution or manifestation of a devil, people are thought morally responsible or blamed for its own disability. This model can be classified into two parts according to what I have researched. The first part is under the religious and spiritual origin. It is believed that disability comes from being cursed by a witch or simply a witchcraft. It is about karma or did something evil in the past. However, they are also believed to be the gift of God. The second part is on a character weakness. It is a result of corruptness and immoralness. Some religions like Hinduism, they believe that disability is a result of some bad karma or moral transgression of previous birth. Sometimes possible cause of it is considered as a sin committed by their parents or ancestors. In Christianity, it is explained a result of collective sin of humans. However, another theory of the religious model of disability explains disability as a test of faith. The person with a disability is thought to be chosen by God specifically for them, and the disability is an opportunity for them to redeem themselves through their patience, strength, and faith in God. Disability is also viewed as a gift from God for the development of virtues such as patience, courage, and perseverance. Persons with disabilities are portrayed as blessed souls in this theory. According to the book of John chapter 9 verses 2 to 3, his disciples asked him, Teacher, whose sin caused him to be born blind? Was it his own or his parents' sin? Jesus answered, His blindness has nothing to do with the sins of his parents' sins. He is blind so that God's power might be seen at work in him. 
Another perspective relates this ability as metacism or metaphysical blessings, where it believed that when God gave one impairment, it is balanced by heightened functioning of other senses, thus making a person spiritually blessed one. Now, how can we promote equity? Adhering to the moral model of disability. First, bring disability to the forefront discussion. Second, collaboratively implement community-driven solutions. Third, learn how one's cultural identity influences understanding of disability. So now let us proceed to the second model of disability, the biomedical or individual model of disability. This perspective believed that disability is within a person. It is when an individual has a physical or mental impairment and the focus is on minimizing or eliminating the impairment. Examples, rehabilitation, pharmaceuticals, and others. This theory or perspective sees people with disabilities are very fragile. It assumes that adults with disabilities probably cannot get good jobs, live independently, fall in love, do many other things. In simply words, impaired individuals need fixing through medical inventions. This model is sometimes also referred to as personal tragedy model of disability, where disability is considered as tragedy. A compassionate or just society, according to the medical model, invests resources in healthcare and related services in an attempt to medically cure the disabilities, expand functionality and or improve functioning, and allow disabled people to live a more normal life. The importance of medical profession's role and potential in this area is widely recognized. The lateral model that stereotyping and defining people by a condition or their limitations due to its emphasis on individuals. The medical model of disability gives rise to terms like invalid, incapacitated, crippled, handicapped, retarded, and so on. People with disabilities are treated as patients who must be treated or rehabilitated by trained professionals. The medical model of disability tends to classify people who are able-bodied as being superior to those who are disabled. According to the theory, the primary purpose of people with disabilities should be to get as close to non-disabled people as possible. People with disabilities are seen as people who need to be fixed. Understanding differences in cultural identity and valued attributes can help you better understand how people behave. Taking a cross-cultural approach to human interaction and disability allows us to consider how personal beliefs and perspectives influence how people interact and view the world. Recognizing the models of disability as well as the cultural factors that influence disability beliefs is critical for personal and systematic change. To promote equitable and long-term solutions, we must identify these fundamental components rooted in cultural and contextual factors. With just these two models of disability, we can see why people with disabilities are given special consideration and why students with special needs are taught in special classrooms with special educational materials that meet their needs. They aren't always of embarrassment, but they are also humans who require proper attention and special care. Thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something from this video. God bless and stay safe everyone.